Here is a story about the Aboriginal goddess, Leah, and the Water Rebellion. Every day the kind goddess Leah peeked through the fluffy white clouds of her heavenly home to make sure that all was well on earth. Lately, however, things didn't seem quite right. In the village just below, where the Goana people lived, there seemed to be much unhappiness. I must do something to help them, she sighed. Leah thought about Angana, the generous mother of life on earth. Through her own suffering, she had given soft green grass to cover the ground and filled the rivers with refreshing water and abundant fish. But now one could see only dry, cracked dirt and empty holes where lakes and rivers had been. Where did things go wrong? Leah wondered. The troubled goddess suddenly came up with an idea. I will go down to earth and live with the people. Only then can I understand the problem and decide what to do about it. And so she prepared for her departure. The sun was blazing hot when she landed just outside of the little village. She quickly took off her splendid robes and replaced them with the simple rags of the local women. Her plan was to marry the chief of the Guana tribe. As the chief's wife, I will be well placed to help the people, she thought. And of course, the unsuspecting man fell instantly in love with her magical charms. They were married the very next day. Secretly, she watched everything around her, hoping to find some answers to her questions. Why was it, she wondered, that her husband was never thirsty? In fact, now that she thought about it, all the men seemed freshly washed and comfortable, despite the burning heat. But the women, now that was another story. Their lips were dry and cracked, their skin covered with the pale desert dust. The goddess found this very strange indeed. She soon learned that the village women went out digging every day. This was their job and Leah was expected to go with them. They would poke the dry earth with their digging sticks and hopefully find some roots to bring home and cook for dinner. Each morning as the women were about to leave, the chief would proudly hand them one gourd of drinking water. Not one gourd each, but one gourd to be shared amongst all the women. The men do not dig for roots, she was told. They have more important work to do. The goddess noticed that every morning the men went off to some unknown destination and did their mysterious jobs. Only in the bright orange glow of the setting sun did the men return to the village. One night, Leah lay upon her sleeping mat, thinking of all that she had seen since her arrival on earth. She turned towards her husband. How fortunate we are that each day you bring us water. Where do you find it? Much to her surprise, the chief laughed wholeheartedly, as if at some secret joke. Then, from the side of his mat, he brought out a second gourd and raised it to his mouth, allowing precious water to trickle carelessly down his chin. When he had had his fill, he offered it to her and replied, Ah, my little wife, that is only for the men to know. After hours of tossing and turning, Leah finally fell asleep, hot and troubled. The next morning, she felt angry and quite determined to find out from where the men were getting their water. She joined the weary women as usual and began digging with them until the last man left the village. But she had not been paying attention to her work she had secretly been watching 
which path the men had taken. She had seen them disappear behind the tall grey rocks that lay off far in the distance. When she felt that it was safe, Leah called to the other women. We must find water for ourselves. One gourd is not enough for all of us. The mother of life made enough water for everyone. The men are keeping it from us. When the women of Gowana heard this news, they were shocked. How dare they make us dig all day for food under the burning sun while they are drinking freely and bringing so little water home to us. Leah pointed to the mountains. Tomorrow we will look for roots, but we shall look for water as well. So the next day, once the last man had disappeared behind the tall grey rocks, the women began their plan. They climbed and climbed and searched everywhere, but as night fell upon them, they were soon obliged to return home. They were so tired, so thirsty, and very miserable, for not a drop of water had been found. When they arrived home, the men were already there. Where were you? demanded one husband. Where is my dinner? questioned another. But it was Leah's husband, the chief, who was the angriest. When they were alone in their hut that night, he scolded. You have disappointed me. You of all women. The village chief's wife must set a good example for the others. The following morning, the chief made an announcement. The men would be gone for several days. No one was to leave the village in their absence. Dig the roots if you must, Leah told the others. I will find water for all of us while they are gone. At this show of courage, two others timidly offered to join her. And so the three women set off for the mountains. But before they had even reached the tall grey rocks, one of the women stopped. I am sorry, she said, but I am too afraid. I can't go on. Hardly was the first woman out of sight when the second woman grew uneasy. She too decided that it would be safer to return to the village. Alone, Leah began the steep climb. Higher and higher she went, balancing her way through the dangerous mountain paths. When the setting sun began to disappear behind the highest peaks, she decided that it would be wise to stop and rest. Chancing upon a small cavern, the goddess crawled inside and gratefully laid her tired body on the cool stone floor. She immediately fell into a deep, deep sleep. How strange, she thought. Who is that tiny person standing at my bedside? Was she dreaming? Then she saw another and another. Soon she was completely surrounded by them. They introduced themselves as the Tukoni, the tiny people of the cave. And imagine her surprise when they all stood on their tiptoes to whisper a secret into her sleeping ear. Filled with joy, Leah raced back to the village to share her dream with the waiting women. We must all climb to the top of the mountain. From there we will see the sea. At this spot, I am to drive my digging stick ever so deeply into a crack in the rocks. When the stick touches the heart of the mountain, it will make the water rise. The women dropped to their knees, praying through their dry, cracked lips. At last there was hope. Wasting no time, the desperate women departed for the mountains. 
Once at the highest point, the powerful goddess thrust her digging stick into the crack described by the little Tukoni people. Suddenly the stick escaped from her hands and plunged itself deeper and deeper into the mountain. The entire mountain began to tremble and then the miracle happened. A crashing flow of crystal clear water forced its way out. It raced along the dusty grey rocks, only stopping to fill the empty brooks and streams. Then it began again, wildly splashing down its path in order to fill the dusty brown bowl of a lake. Lastly, it widened into a large blue band, and this band was to become the Murumbiji River. The Gowana women watched in amazement. They timidly dipped their dry, cracked hands into the fresh water and took a sip. Then the bolder ones stepped into the puddles and began jumping up and down. Soon everyone was playfully splashing each other and dancing for joy. They wanted this magic moment to last as long as possible. So they all sat down by the side of the new river to rest before returning home. The sun was just beginning to set when they suddenly heard unexpected voices. The men had returned to the village and they were demanding their dinners. But their voices echoed off in the distance. They were on the other side of the river. The village women looked at each other in dismay. And what if we never go back, said one. And what if we build our own village, suggested another. And so it was, that very same day, the women of Guana set off to build a village of their own. Hopefully one day they would meet nicer men and share their village with them. But for now, there was much work to be done. Assuring herself that all was it should be, the kind-hearted goddess Leah bid farewell to all her new friends. It was time to return to her heavenly home where her next divine mission would surely be waiting for her.